Genesis chapter 37 Jacob lived in the land of Canaan, where his father had stayed. This is the story of Jacob's family. When Joseph was a young man of seventeen, he was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of the surrogates Bilhah and Zilpah, as well as the sons of his father's wife. Upon returning home, Joseph, with innocent concern for his brothers, gave an honest report to his father of the wrongs his brothers were doing. Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because Joseph had a pure heart and honoured God, and was born to him in his old age by his beloved wife, Rachel. So he made a finely ornamented and beautifully coloured coat for him. When the brothers saw that their father loved and trusted Joseph more than them, they resented it. And rather than evaluating their own characters and practices, they chose to hate Joseph and refused to speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they were outraged and hated him even more. Joseph said to them, Brothers, listen to this dream I had. We were all out in the field, gathering sheaves of grain into bundles. Suddenly my bundle rose up and stood tall, while your bundle circled around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers derided him, saying, So, you intend to be our master and rule over us? Do you really think we would ever bow down to you? And they despised him hating him even more after hearing his dream. Then Joseph had another dream, and told this one to his brothers also, saying, Brothers, I had another dream. This time the sun and moon and eleven stars all bowed down to me. When he told his father along with his brothers, his father tried to reduce tension with his brothers by playing down the dream and said, What kind of dream is that? Do you think your mother and I and all your brothers will actually come and bow down to you? While his brothers remained jealous of Joseph, his father thought deeply about the possible implications. One day, when Joseph brothers had taken their father's flocks to Shechem to graze, Israel became concerned for them and said to Joseph, Your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. I am sending you to them to check that all is well. I am happy to go, father, Joseph replied. So he instructed him, Go, find your brothers, and ensure all is well with them and the flocks, and report back to me. Then Jacob sent him off from the Hebron valley. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, he was wandering around the fields, looking for his brothers. When a man found him and asked him, What are you looking for? I am looking for my brothers, he replied. Please tell me, do you know where they are grazing their flocks? The man told him, they left here a while ago. I heard them say they were going to Dotham. So Joseph headed off to find his brothers and caught up to them near Dothan. But Joseph's brothers spotted him in the distance, and before he arrived they plotted to kill him. Stoking each other's hate, they said, Here comes the dream master, the one who dreams of being our lord. Hey! This is our chance to get rid of him. Let's kill him and throw him into one of these dry wells and say that wild animals devoured him. Then we'll see how his dreams turned out. But when Reuben heard what they were plotting, he intervened, trying to rescue Joseph. We can get rid of him without killing him ourselves, he said. Why should his blood be on our hands? 
Let's not kill him, but throw him into this dry well here in the desert. He will die of exposure, but we won't be guilty of killing him. Reuben said this because he planned on rescuing Joseph and taking him back to his father. So when Joseph reached his brothers, they grabbed him, stripped him of his finely ornamented coat, and threw him into a dry well. When the brothers sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. They were heading to Egypt with their camels, loaded with spices, balm and myrrh to trade. Beginning to question their actions and not experiencing the relief anticipated, Judah said to his brothers, What good can possibly come to us if we kill our own brother and cover up his murder? Come on, let's not kill him, but sell him to the Ishmaelites instead. After all, his family, our brother, our very own flesh and blood, his brothers agreed. So when the Ishmaelite traders came, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the dry well and sold him to them for twenty pieces of silver, and the traders took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to get Joseph out of the well, he wasn't there. Reuben was overcome with distress and tore his clothes in grief. He confronted his brothers. What have you done with Joseph? He's not in the well. When they told him what they had done, he said, what am I going to tell father now? So they all agreed to kill a young goat and dip Joseph's coat in the blood. Then they took the finely ornamented coat stained with the goat's blood back to their father and said, We found this coat on the way home. Look at it. It isn't Joseph's coat, is it? Jacob recognized it immediately and cried out in anguish, it is my son's coat. Oh, no! A ferocious animal has killed him. My precious Joseph has been torn to pieces. Jacob tore his clothes, covered himself in sackcloth, and mourned for his son many, many days. The rest of the family, all his sons and daughters, tried to comfort him, but his grief would not resolve. He said, No. I will never stop grieving for Joseph. I will go to my grave still mourning for my son. So Jacob continued to mourn for his son. Meanwhile, the Ishmaelite traders sold Joseph in the slave market in Egypt to Potiphar, an official in Pharaoh's court, the captain of the guard. Chapter 